Hi, welcome back. Um, so we're this is the third part of our series of videos um, doing our furry dials. This is going to be the last one that you guys get for free. After this video, any more, you're going to need to sign up for my Patreon. But these three that we've done should be a good taster of the sort of thing you're going to get. Please bear in mind, they'll get better. So we're kind of virgins at this and we're learning what we're doing. Um, so much so that I'd love to have a couple of pictures up that I could actually see, John. That would be great. My, my director, he's a nightmare to work with these thespians. I tell you, especially the tall ones, because they bully you a little bit when you're only four foot nothing like me. Anyway, back to the point. So, the last two episodes, we've flatlined and we've green stuffed. And now we're on to painting. And I've jumped a little bit ahead, just purely because it's boring otherwise, as I've primed it, undercoated it. But I'll tell you what I've used, because this is quite important. Normally, if I was painting an X-Wing ship, I would just use a fine surface primer straight from the airbrush and make sure the model was clean, free of any mould lines and so forth, and then just spray straight over the paint. Because this plastic is special, I've used special paint because from experience the paint chips off. So I've used this, it's called Rust-Oleum. It was from uh, um, a hardware store, so B&Q, and it's a specific plastic primer and it, it gives better adhesion on this kind of soft plastic. So I primed it with this. I only have white at the moment. I haven't got a black one. And because I haven't got a black one, I've then base coated it with a standard GW rattle can black. Um, just because I'm working really dark colors and I don't want to work a really dark brown up from white. It's just making yourself more work. So that's all dry and done. And I've base coated these edge, this edge here, this little bit here and this bit in I do believe it's called exhaust manifold these are acrylic uh, Vallejo acrylic metal colors um, we stuck them here if there's anything we ain't got just give John a message I'm sure he can get it in for you um, anyway this is I'm gonna go up to a gold and I've started with this manifold because I haven't got a dark bronze color to be fair and you're not gonna notice the difference you'll see all I want is dark metal base because I'm gonna show you now I'm just gonna highlight all of this up with the airbrush um, so I'll crack on. I remember, if you remember from the first video, I've got my brush, I've got my cleaning method. I'm just going to go straight from pot to brush. A few spots of gold. Oh, I might need to give that a bit of a shake. I may have just got paint medium there. Oh, I'll make it fine, don't worry. Call that my, my gold period. There we go. A few pots of gold. A little test spray. So, magic glasses. It's not just my eyes that go in, it's also my mind. So, what I want to do is I want to spray all of this. It's like a base coat, but I don't want a pure base coating. I want to give it a bit of shadow with a brush. So I'm going to catch this edge. I'm going to start, this is my hard edge of painting, and then I'm going to feather up towards here, leaving the dark around the edges of the fur. So... So I'm just dusting the edges first. No need to rush up. A lot of people think that airbrushes just for using stencils and are just for base coating. It says it in the name, it's called brush. I think I use this now more than I do my paint brushes because there's so many cool things to do. So look, if you notice, I'm constantly blowing out, or I'll test on my, oh, do you know what? Major rule, before we go any further, rewind selector, gloves, number one thing. Do not paint your ships or anything without wearing gloves. You see me sculpt without gloves, that's fine. Don't touch your models once you start painting with bare hands. It is ruinous to your work. The oils on your hands will strip the paint, they will clean the edges off and all your work will be for nothing. You'll also get paint reaction. You'll get reaction with your, your, your thinners. You'll get reaction with your varnishes. PVC gloves, you get them from screw fix. You, get, you can get them everywhere. They cost me seven quid for a box of a thousand. 
gloves all the time gloves so and we're back in it so we're just carrying on and so I'm just wisping it up towards the top and I'm going to add to this gold in a minute so this is not the final this is kind of a base but I still want to leave that darker imperfection that darker color towards the top so like I said I'm doing this because instead of whenever you feel like you're not getting paint you don't want to blast on your model you either blast off screen because sometimes they'll pick up a tiny bit of dry paint and all it needs is a full blast it's gone and you're back to see look so when I hold on my hand and I just pull my trigger back slightly I can see I've got controlled paint whereas if I've got a pulled way back to get paint out I'm at a bad state so you just want to you keep look and I spat so do your test before you go to your piece so I know I've got clean paint coming I blow out then I get onto my piece so I don't want to make once you make a mistake it can be very hard to correct because you can't really correct it with a brush So that's caught cool enough and I don't know if you can, I'm sure you can pick this up, you can see there's this colour fade already and that's just using the same colour but reapplying. So paint has something which is called opacity and opacity is about how the colour shows through to what's behind it. So the more you build up your levels of opacity the stronger the colour becomes. So here, I'm going to start in the centre. Let's see. That's I just want to whiff a bit of gold in the centre there. I'm going to put a, a red with a brush over the actual rebel symbol. And just a little bit. See, it was slightly clogged little blast and she's giving me paint again so that's all I want to do on those two bits because you're not going to get too much uh, um, a variation in color here such a small area and once I put the brown around this is a very it's like a spot color it's not really going to be the thing this is what I'm really worried about putting the shadow on so I'd normally wash my brush I'm not doing it I'm going to add color and mix in the pot so this is a dull aluminium a lot of people when they highlight gold they go gold and, and it looks wrong go silver in the gold and it creates like a light effect in your gold um, I may actually need to use a little bit of just to give it a little bit more colour this is my game air stuff whereas that um, dull element there is a lot more silver so I'm just mixing in my, my reservoir so now I don't want silver, but I want like white gold. So I just want a slightly lighter colour. So let's wash my brush out. Always tongue your point after you use a brush. That sounded dirty, didn't it? Um, do you know they actually pay women in Russia? to tongue your sable brushes into a point. It's not done by a machine, one of the few things still done by hand. Oh, so anyway, um, moving on swiftly before the director has faints and has a heart attack. So um, let's just have a look. It's a little bit lighter. I might actually need to add a little bit more of this, a little bit more silver. But I'm just gonna catch that edge and see what I think. So it is slightly lighter. So I would like a little bit more. So I'm, again, I'm just going to go and put, I'm going to put two, maybe three drops in this time. Give it a mix. As a final highlight on the gold, when everything else is done, I will run a brush on the edge with almost pure silver, just to catch the edge. It's quite graphic. I'm quite a graphic painter. I'm colorblind, so I paint like I'm reading a cartoon book, if that makes any sense. But, um, so we're just going to keep 
let that paint change happen. That's it, it's gone a lot lighter now. So I'm just catching this corner, this corner, this little bit here, and then a little bit of the bottom, just on this front edge. There you go. Alright, so let's just pop that there for a second. I will clean it. You'll see me do that. You know I'm funny with cleaning. But we've already got, we've got three colours just using the airbrush. A nice shadow already done. Yeah, you don't need to go more than that on the edges because all the detail is going to be on your brown. This gold's going to set the brown off really nice as well. So bear with me a second while I wash my brush. It's important you guys see this because you mustn't leave your brushes dirty. You know, I did this in the first video, but for the two minutes it's going to take me to clean it, it's worth every second. So remember, like I taught you in the first videos, you do not blow through. You wash it all out before you blow. You can blow through clean water, but you do not want to blow through paint that you've just scrubbed out. Because acrylic dries incredibly fast, you only need a bit of air to create a hard spot and it'll get in your nozzle. We're looking pretty clean there. Yep. Now I can spray out my clear water. No clogging. If you try and do that with dirty water, dirty paint, you end up with a little bit in, and all of a sudden it's spitting, it's a pain in the bum, and it don't work ready for the next color. That quick, guys. Just like a little mantra. 100 pound brush could just go in the toilet if you don't do that. Right, so, the next bit, I'm doing it the old fashioned way. I need to base coat all of the fur and the bandolier in a dark brown. I'm gonna use, no, that's green, the brown. I'm in the browns, everyone. There we go, charred browns. So again, game air. Um, you can definitely use your normal color paints. You don't have to use air paints at this point, but I love my game air. It's got a really nice flow to it. It's a little bit thinner. You might need to put two coats. I don't really care about having to put two coats. I prefer to put two thin coats than one thick coat and obliterate the paint. Um, I may well go quiet in a minute. And when I go quiet, by the magic of televisual, I'm sure we're gonna have a bit of speeded up process because you don't need to sit and watch me for 20 minutes putting a base coat on. But when you use the game air stuff, it just flows nicely. So even when you're putting a base coat, remember, don't use an overly small brush. Brushes are like any other tool. So a brush is designed to like have a reservoir in it. So if you've got a decent sized stock on your brush and you load it and twist it, your brush will paint like a quill. Whereas if you've got four hairs, it's got nothing to paint. So even when I'm painting tiny, tiny stuff, you'd probably be quite shocked how big my brushes are and how very rarely I swap down a size. I'll use this brush a lot, even to start putting in detail colors, washes, pin washes, where you'd think you'd need a much smaller brush. But when you, when you hold paint in the brush and it gives, you, it gives you a feed of paint, you actually find that you paint a lot better and a lot quicker and a lot simpler. And this game air stuff, look, because it's got a black base coat, we've worked off dark colors. I'm not gonna need two. If I do miss the odd little bit of black in the recesses, that's just going to add to a bit of shading. So, this is the point where I'm probably going to go quiet and time is going to go into a <laughs> Base coat brand's all done. Simple as that really. Just base coat, bit of a hair dryer to dry it out. So what I want to do now is, I'm going to ignore this for a minute. I don't need to do any more to that just yet, just in case I make some mistakes at this point. Um, I want to highlight the fur with some lighter browns. So I'm going to do that with the airbrush. 
I, when I first painted these, I did try dry brushing it and it looks terrible. It just does not give you this, the same sort of results. So that line is that line. Yes, these must be browns. Yep. What does that one say? That's the skin coat. That's what have we got here? Oops. Leather brown, there we go. So I'm going to start with Beastie Brown, like the Beastie Boys, but now they've branched out into making colours. Uh, let's give that a good shake. I'm going to use two colours, Beastie Brown and Leather Brown. Both game air. Let's get on my magic, magic glasses. Have a little test out. So I'm going to try not to go right into these corners. I'm going to try not to go to the edges. I don't want to damage the gold that I've done. You don't have to worry about that. You can use your airbrushes very close. Take your time. There's no rush. Build up that colour. People often ask me about overspray and stuff. It is a thing, but there's different ways of using your brush. So nice and close, a little bit of air, a little bit of paint. That's why a dual action is what it is. It allows you to control that mix at the brush. But if you're struggling, you can even turn down your air a little bit on the compressor. I'm running at 20 pounds today. Because obviously you really do you just have the control in the actual brush itself. There you go, let's put a bit of colour. I'm going to swap to the close up, I'll just pop it there for a minute so you can have a look. Let's give it a little bit of colour. I'm not sure actually, now that I've swapped to that, I've just remembered that I've set the focus on that if you write down the bottom. Let's try and like that for you, that might be a bit better. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. There's definitely, you can see the light browns picked up, leaving the dark brown. So I'm going to do a quick clean of my airbrush. Lids on your paints, it's important if you just try and keep yourself clean while you're working, you'll make less mistakes. Nice clean area. So we probably don't need to go too mental with this clean because we are going from um, brown to brown. However, this time I'm just going to check my needle just to make sure, because what happens is once you use them, the actual paint going over the tip of that needle, just the process of that, the air, will um, sometimes dry. So I'm just checking that, I see I thought so. so. Right on the tip of my needle, there's a tiny bit of dry paint. So I'm just gonna clean that off, there you go. So now I'm back to my real point. Whereas before, it had like a, an unmeasurable amount, like hundredth of a thou but that makes all the difference when you're playing with hundredth of a foul. Because it's what, you know, the app, the openings on these things are so small, the slightest little bit of dirt or imperfection is gonna affect what you're doing. So, straight up to leather brown. Because I've cleaned, I sometimes give it a tap 
a, a little spit of bit of water that's just got in there and got caught while I've washed it. Not that it's in my brush, and if that was to spit onto your model. So you always test spray away from what you're doing. So let's go back to this piece. Let's um, just put that back on my little blue tack tub. Right. So, same areas I did before, obviously, just not quite as much of them. That's pretty close to what I want. So, two shades of brown in the fur, that's enough. It doesn't need any more, because now we're gonna make the fur pop by picking out the belt. So, um, I will do a quick brush clean. I'm not gonna be lazy. I could be lazy, because we're doing filming, and I know you guys are bored of watching me clean paintbrushes. But I've gotta do it, otherwise there won't be another video. That's what you need to think about, guys. Unless, of course, you subscribe to the Patreon, in which case I can buy another airbrush. Um, and then I won't have to worry about cleaning them so often on video. I can just switch. So, less cleaning time, more Patreon pleasures. Okay, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Don't be bored. Don't run away. Don't switch over to Coronation Street. Stay with me. Right, that'll do me. Nice and clean. So we can do another one of these videos. Now, the bandolier. Let's have just moved myself. Let's have a little clean up. The bandolier is brown with the silver parts. So what I'm going to do before anything is I am going to pick out these silver areas. So I have got steel, gun metal. It's just black. Steel, sorry. Gun metal. sound of that so this be quite bright bright but I'm gonna put a little wash on it anyway so again I'm always using my game air to paint with I love game air it's like I don't have to put any thinner if you were using anything other than an air paint with a brush you want to be using Liquitex airbrush medium or another kind of painting medium I use Liquitex with all my paint, I know it says airbrush medium, it makes your paint thinner. Don't use water, it's not as good. I don't know why it's not as good, but honestly, from experience, it really isn't as good. So, all I want to do now is just paint both sides of this metal on the model. Thinner your paint, the better. Well, you know, I don't know, it shouldn't be water, but if you let the paint flow, it just makes everything easier. If the paint's too thick, you not only will lose detail, you'll also struggle to paint a nice straight line. You'll struggle to get it to where you want it to go, and you'll be forever going back and trying to fix mistakes you've made. So, 
You know, this is why I wear gloves. I've got my hands all over this. I need to turn it, I need to move it. Yeah, make it easy on yourself. I've seen people that paint on stands and I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they can keep a piece in one space and turn the brush. I need to turn the piece personally. So back onto this side. So as soon as we start to put this silver on, it's already starting to show you the form of the piece. You know, I struggle a lot that when you make start and you work on a piece that you, I struggle to see the end result. And it's only through years of doing it that you, you, you get to like a point with any paint job. It's like a, a bad haircut or like if you're growing your hair out where you get to that point where it looks really bad. But you know that if you leave it for another week, it will be fine. It's the same with painting. You get to a point in paint jobs where you look at it and you kind of go, oh, oh, I don't know if I like it. I'm not sure about it. And that's probably because you haven't finished. And a picture or a piece of artwork is all about composition. And the composition's only complete when it's complete. It's not complete when it's half done. I've always struggled showing people half completed pieces of work because I felt I'd need to explain what's not finished because ultimately that picture is not, it's just not right until every little aspect's done. So you might find yourself hitting hurdles where you're at kind of midway through a paint job and thinking, this don't look nothing like what that does. You've got to go through all the processes. So don't feel like you're the only one. I've been doing it a long time and I still regularly get through a job and think, oh, I hate it, I hate it. And then I bear with it and all of a sudden I love it because it's finished and I'm seeing what's in my head as opposed to what's in front of me. Lots of processes. So. Okay. So I've also got on this, I've got these little buttons. I need to just catch them in silver and two on here, one there. So most people when they do metals, or a certain most people, I've certainly noticed people when they paint metals, they don't give it any love. They just put a base coat on, they chuck an ink over it and they go, that's metal, metal's done. Metal's like any colour, although it's got a metallic pigment, it's a colour. And you can highlight it, you can shade it and you can make it live if you give it time and you give it a bit of effort people don't spend enough time playing with their steel colors so if you think about like you're doing an, an engine if you look at engines in a, a real life something like a jet engine it will burn brown it will burn blue you get all these beautiful colors that you can put you'll have really high silvers really dull aluminiums uh, the same when you're painting gold, you've got really deep, beautiful coppers right the way up to, like I said, like white golds, which is almost silver. And you can put all that in. So, right, that's silver base coat. We're just going to give that a hair dry. Oh, a hair dry down there, hiding. do me a favour and pass me a Nuln Oil. I've left me Nuln Oil on the other side of the shop and Ash is just going to grab it for me because I'm going to do a little bit of a wash. Superstar, thank you very much Ash. Games Workshop, uh, Nuln Oil, everyone knows what it is. I would normally have some Lamy and medium. So if you ever want to use this and you don't want it to be so strong, mix it with Lamy and medium. It will stop when you when you put it on a large area, it won't split, it splits with water. It doesn't split with Lamy and medium. I don't want much of this. I just want to pick out a few bits. So I'm going to use it neat. And because I'm using it neat, I'll probably have to go back and clean up a few bits. But um, I want to try and keep it quite 
specific to where I put it. So all I want to do is I want to run a bit up the side of this, this actual belt just to darken the edge of it because I'll end up highlighting this belt to catch that edge to lift it against it. I just want to create as much um, Always just keep an odd cotton bud handy if you ever go over. You can just use it to clean off. So I just want to catch these bits here. So create some shadow. Just a little more. It's already dark enough to be fair. I don't need to go over all the fur. I just want to help emphasize where that belt is pushing on that fur. And then I'm going to put a little bit on the metal as well. Not too much because I'm going to do some highlighting on the metal. You know, I'm not trying to paint a ship now. I'm trying to paint something that's going to pop a little bit. So it's okay to be cartoony. It's okay to be expressive. Yeah, remember it's your hobby, your art. There's no rights. There's no wrongs. If you're enjoying what you're doing, it's right. So again here, I'm not going to go all over, I just want to catch those two edges. I just want to make sure that there's a little bit of dark going in that. There's really no need for more than this. So you could use um, um, Agrax Earthshade. If you didn't have any black, it'd give you a little bit more of a rusty battered look. But um, I can't see Chewies ammunition pouches being rusty can you all that oil off his hair so, so while that's drying instead of hair drying it it's never a good idea to hair dry inks because the pressure of the air pushes the ink it's it's not set so hair dryers are great for paint not great for ink so while that's drying I'm just going to base coat the rebel symbol and we're going to go with red which is probably going to take me 10 minutes to find because there's other colors here as well uh, that's, we'll go red so just straight up to like a blood red bloody red this is called the air color good old-fashioned red for a rebel symbol I'm just going to base coat the symbol itself take your time So like I said, look, you can see with a brush with a decent size to it, I can paint that whole thing. It's fed. See the, the paint's fed out of my brush. If you go with something silly, you still got a control. You still got a. You'll get your build-up feel for doing stuff like this. Just get a bit of base colour on there. So let that dry off. Let's get a bit of, um, on that itself. I will I'll still leave the ink I'll go straight back into the red and I'll just do a little bit of edge highlighting going up this way now so so because I'm colorblind that's how I work with colors so generally I don't like them to be mixed up but I'll go kind of I use my labels but just dark to light that's how you should work with everything really and that gets more complicated when you start painting greens and there's blue greens and yellow greens and all this sort of stuff but um straight over my head i have to speak to my wife about that so i'm going to jump up to fire orange i don't think i need to touch the hot orange and i'm just going to put it on the side of my red just so that i can use a bit of both colors and the color together so i can create two or three different colors with the color and I'm just going to catch that edges and so this is nice and wet this paint so you can put it up take off your excess and then feather that into the red and so if you start really high you're going to notice that but if you start quite close to the original shade it's easier to get those soft blends and then a bit more of the orange as I'm coming in like I said about opacity the more I'm putting on the more it will pick it up just catching an edge So 
so let's chuck in a bit of yellow. Let's just dry that off. So, so this isn't really wet blending, this is just layering with paint I suppose you'd call it. But because your paints are nice and thin, you can feather it out into the darker colour. So you shouldn't get like super hard colour changes, unless that's what you're after. So, because certainly right at the end, I am going to put a really hard yellow highlight on certain bits of this. But at the moment, I just want to create a bit of a fade. Obviously, I haven't got my lovely airbrush because I'm good with it, but I'm not that good. Where I could paint this little thing with it. So we've got a red orange thing going on here now, I like that. We'll take a little bit more yellow, just keep it away from the reds. I might even chuck a touch of white with this, just to make it pop. Mix your paint, George, mix your paint. So just on the tips and the edges, I just want to catch. But I want to, I took that into the dark a little bit, which is what I wanted. It makes that pop out a bit more. Can't actually see on the overhead there, George. Am I, am I, am I in yeah. the way? So. Sorry guys. It's my old eyes as well, guys. Struggling to get all the cameras to work and me to be actually be able to see what I'm doing. Perhaps for the next video we shall have a camera pointed more at an angle downwards. Can you still see, can you see now John? Yeah, yeah you guys can yeah. see now. Yeah. Right. I'll leave it on that one thing. So. But of course they'll have to sign up to the Patreon to uh, see the next video. So. So we've got a nice little highlight on that, pops out a little bit, lovely. So back to the belt, let's get those reds out of the way and let's go back to me silvers. So what we got, we've got gunmetal steel, chainmail, chainmail, chainmail was my original colour. So I'll go back to chainmail, yes it's still there in the pot. I had a little bit of steel on the side because I want a bit, a bit of a highlight now. I'm going back to my big brush as well. Because I don't need to be on my small brush. I'll put a bit of that in there. Now, so time's passed. My paint's just slightly dried. I don't like it. I want a little bit more slip. A spot of thinner. Get it back to where you want it. Once your paint starts drying, it's it does start behaving completely differently. So, so all I want to do now is catch the edges and feather with my brush so a lot of what I'm doing a lot of you won't even see until it's all finished and then it becomes a thing as you're going through it a lot of people don't realize kind of the, the stages involved with painting they miss quite a few out and that's okay until you know what you're doing and then as you get more into it you'll learn that the more you put in the more you get out So now I just want to catch those edges more. So suddenly, because you, you're adding different colour, a different levels of light in the paint, it starts to become three-dimensional. 
when paint's very bland and flat, you can't see detail. But this allows you to put detail. Paint a picture, guys. I've always said that. Instead of just trying to paint the model, paint a picture on the model. You know? Like as if it was a cartoon, a, a comic book even, not a cartoon. So that's already, you can see it's shining on those edges. I don't know if you can see it, to be fair. But it is, it's got this lovely shine on the edges. Go with that as well, and I'll just catch the top of these. Bring them a little bit. Can we see it on the close up, George? We can. Let's have a look if we can. Can we see that? How are we looking there, John? Yeah, look, I mean, you can instantly see that, that, that lighter edge that's along there. Um, So you can see it just starts to lift so there's a darker color right in the back let's see what we can do on here so, ooh, i'm working counterintuitive here that's it so catch that edge just for as john john playing with my focus you can see just just a little bit just building it up Let me get some. I'll come back to that camera. Yep. You, can, you can stay with it. On uh, let's go up to silver, to so an even brighter colour. Right. So So you can see, and, and and you need to appreciate, guys, that um, no camera and no picture will ever truly show you what a model looks like until you've got it in your hand. Um, but you can see that there's there's color variation, there's depth, there's texture to that silver. It's not just a flat bit of silver. So I, I'm happy with the metal. I'm happy with the fur. Um, to be fair, I'd like to fiddle about a little bit more with the Rebel logo, but we're on camera, so I'm struggling to, to give you 100% just because of distances and the way we're filming things. But what I will do now is I'll move on to the bandolier a little bit, and I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting, once again with a brush. So I'm going to use the same colours that I used on the fur, but I just want to catch an edge. I want to give this strap a little bit of something. Because at the moment it, it's just a bland colour. So let's get in here. Um, that's red, isn't it? So I would have called that brown. Right. So I want a little bit of medium in this, even though I've just poured it out, because I want to do a little bit of blending. So you load a brush, you roll a brush, get your brush ready like you would your airbrush. So I'm gonna so catch an edge there and then I'm gonna feather that across a little bit. And I'm gonna work that the same both all the way along. So starting from this left hand side, working across. Not painting this bit here or this bit. So from this point, working one way, feathering out. From this point, one way out, feathering out. So because I've made my paint thin, talked about opacity, I can do this, and as I start to build lighter colours on this left hand side, um, it will it will increase the effect, but it, it kind of works like a wet blend, because your paint's so opaque, it's so thin and translucent, that you can pull off little tricks like this. Let's get some more brown. So now this is 
going to not be pick upable on the camera at the moment. But trust me, something's happening. So I want to catch the edge of this as well. I want to give this a bit of a highlight with this same colour. Bringing this round and up. And then just feather that a little bit in, a little bit here. Make this look a little bit like a leather belt. And then just run my brush. Catch a few of the edges of this belt underneath. So these first processes that you guys are probably going to struggle a little bit to see that's what really is going to set your work apart is is put in the time put in these layers so I, I recently did a commission where someone was asking how I got the blend how do you get that it's just because I instead of doing two highlights I'll do five highlights if you break anything down into little increments you're going to end up with a, a finer result Just to bring some colour there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to where I was and I'm going to go back over with the same colour. Now, so because we talked about opacity and colour build, so now that same colour is creating a lighter effect. Even though I haven't upped my colour, it's just that I've put two coats. And so I don't go quite as far with, with the feather, I just go a little bit. And so that same colour now is starting to build colour and you can you can start to see it a little bit more, but not too much, you don't want to go too much. So catch an edge there, catch an edge, just a little edge. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of my leather brown, <laughs> talking with a bracket and that. Okay, so I'm going to give that a mix in because I don't want to go straight to that leather brown. That's probably going to be my last highlight, the leather brown on its own. And again, just going to catch this edge and a little bit of feathering. Again, stopping closer than I did before. That's the point. So when you're, when you're layering a colour, you want to build it. But you don't want to cover over all of what you just did. You want to leave some of that darker colour. So just from the left to the right. It could be from the right to the left, whatever makes you guys happy. So I'm also now, now that I'm getting a bit lighter, I'm gonna catch this straight edge. So I'm gonna run a, a thin line like that, just on one side of this bandolier. We're losing the model again, George. No. Are we back? Yep. Just going to catch this straight edge just as a little edge highlight. Right, so let's get a bit more of that. I'm going to go back around this edge, picking up again. And on the other side. Just catching some of this straight edge along here. Just I have to get it all because I get that the, the fur can get in the way. But some of it, where you can catch an edge, that's what you want to do. I think I am going to step up one more shade. So let's go straight up to leather brown and see if this is high enough for me with no um, of the beastie brown in it. And now this is really just edge catching I want to do. I don't want to paint this all over. I just want to catch a few edges. So to create a kind of a, a light against the dark. Just, just graphic. You know what? I'm going to switch to my super powerful magnify glasses because my normal glasses ain't cutting the mustard at that range. That's better. Right. So I just want to catch that edge. Get this light colour. Catch that edge. Catch that edge. So 
the lighter the colour, the less you're painting. Obviously the darker you go, the more you're painting. Alright, let's take off my glasses so I can actually see it in normal eyes. Yeah? What can that do you at that point? So, is there any more I think could be done to this? No, not really. I think that's going to be all you guys really need to know how to do. I'll pop this under the close-up camera. Can you see that, John? So, yeah, we've got some, some highlight on the belt. We've got some highlight on the metal. We're catching these edges to give you uh, a, a little bit of definition. We've got enough variation in the fur. Um, and a nice little highlight on the rebel symbol just to give a little bit of depth. That's all you really need to do with painting the dial. Uh, to be fair, I think painting the dial is the easiest part of this whole process. Um, it's the sculpting that's probably a little bit of a myth for you all. So, but, but that's it, that's, that's our furry dial completed. Ah, actually, no, it's not. We need to varnish it. Varnish. So this Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear, this is um, it's another plastic varnish I've been using this for these and only these I do not use this on my my ships or my miniatures I airbrush all my varnishes but your miniatures aren't taking the battering this is going to take so this is like super heavy heavy duty varnish so be aware that when you're spraying anything with varnish from a rattle can you are at the mercy of environmental conditions it needs to be warm it needs to be dry you need to have shaken the can properly. Um, sometimes I'll stand a can that's cold in a jug of lukewarm water to let the paint. What it is, it's the, it's the uh, propeller and the paint that don't mix properly in the cold and you get a blue and you create your darker colors to go like frosted white. So good environmental conditions and dust coats from about 30 centimeters is what you're looking at. After it's varnished, it's done um, and, and that really is it for our three part tutorial it's a little bit of what I do kind of mashed into three things just to give you a bit of a taste of what the patreon is going to be about um, get onto the website and pledge me two dollars ten dollars twenty dollars if you pledge me ten dollars you get entered into a six monthly draw where you're gonna win one of the small ships to make if you pledge me twenty dollars you're going to get entered into the, the small ship draw and also into a large ship draw. So every six months, a small ship and a large ship that I've done, and most likely you guys have probably watched a video of me making so you can see how much time and effort has gone into it. One of you is going to get to win for what? For $10 a month, which is like, it's nothing guys. Uh, it really is nothing. And you're supporting me, you're supporting Warlords, and we can keep doing these videos for you and, and teaching you everything I've got inside of me basically there's no point taking it to the grave I've probably only got 10 years left in me let's face facts um, as you can see the beard is back so that alone should be enough reason for you guys to go out and pledge yeah just I mean if you don't pledge I'll shave and then you'll have to see that that weird rat looking face without a beard on it look I hope you enjoyed your time with me I hope you enjoyed these three videos I'll just say it once more any more, you've got to sign up to my Patreon to see them. So please get over there and do it. Follow my page on Facebook and give me a call and maybe I can do a commission piece for you. So thanks very much. One love. See you again soon.